Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the series on Enterprise Architect and Diagramming. Uh, I'm joined again today with Stephen McGuire, and we are looking at communication diagrams today, Stephen. Uh, that's right, Tom. A, another interesting interaction uh, diagram and one of the um, one of the behavioural uh, diagrams in UML. As always, we'll start with our changing our perspective. If you notice, I've been doing some strategic modeling, Tom, um, some SWOT analysis, and um, I'm just gonna change out of that perspective into the uh, UML perspective, and uh, I'll go into this uh, behavioral uh, model here. So I'm gonna add a, a uh, place in the project browser to put these diagrams. Now, um, you notice under here that I've got an interaction model, and in a previous video, we did a, an interaction model with um, and, and a sequence diagram. So what I'm going to do is um, as you work with your models, you have the flexibility of changing the uh, content of the project browser, the structure. So I'm going to add another package here and I'm going to call it um, sequence diagrams because the UML defines two types of interaction um, diagrams or possibly there's a, a, a third one as well, which is interaction overview diagram. So I'm going to say this is sequence diagrams. I'm going to move um, my sequence diagram up into that uh, into that node. So I can just drag and drop any of the elements um, from the um, in the project browser up into a new node. I'm going to oh, add. That doesn't affect our diagrams at all? No, it, it doesn't at all. It's simply the sort of organization uh, of, of your repository. Think about it like your favorite um, file explorer uh, that you use and, you know, you're often you set up some packages and folders in that and often as you start doing more work you realize that your folder structure needs a little bit of um you know an embellishment creating some new folders so it's very much like that and that won't affect our won't affect our diagrams uh, at all so i'm adding a, a communication diagram uh, package there i'll close the sequence uh, diagram one and just to show you tom that that hasn't <clears throat> affected our diagram that's one that we created uh, earlier the sequence diagram. If you haven't watched that video, uh, that's an interesting one uh, to to go back and watch. But we're we're concentrating on communication diagrams today. Let's um, create uh, a new diagram here, and under the diagram types, we have the uh, behavioural diagrams, and we want to choose a communication one and choose the create diagram. And notice that again that the toolbox has changed to be the elements that we need. Tom, I have in. A number of videos explored the concept of the difference between dragging something from the toolbox um, and dragging something from the project browser. Now, when you start a model, uh, it might be started with very few elements uh, in in the actual repository. You may have used the the features of Enterprise Architect to pull in all sorts of elements from other places. Um, so, in fact, you know when you start modeling, there might be lots of things in the project browser. But let's um. And we're in that situation. We've done some modeling before, and what we want to use is um, is use some of the elements that we've um, used before. So uh, let's look at this scenario of this parking meter, and let's uh, look at the motorist. It's kind of the starting point, right? The motorist um, parks their vehicle, approaches the meter, uh, and then says, "Okay, look, we um, we need to uh, you know choose some some of the parameters for our parking, the time, the time, and the type of payment and things." So let's um, drop that on as a, um, an instance there. And we can give that instance uh, a name if we want to. So um, let's call this um, Roger uh, Appleton Smith. And so that's an actual um, person that we can uh, put there. And then let's, um, let's drag on a, um, a component. So we'll leave our use case diagram. And we have done a component model before. And just to show you briefly uh, that model, um, and again, go back and look at the video if you um, if you want to look at component models in detail. But we've got that component model there. I'll just close that for a moment. And the first thing that the motorist is going to do is probably um, approach the display unit. You know, typically you can tap on them, the digital units to start working. We'll put that in as a um, an instance there, component, um, and we'll then do what's interesting is we'll put a um, a connector in between. Um, these elements. And so we've got our uh, connector there. Then we'll use our alignment feature there. And now um, if I right mouse click on this, um, I can add a message from the uh, the motorist to the display unit. And that's what I'm going to do. So uh, it defaults to uh, call there. I can select that. And because we've had this component of this display unit before, it has got 
uh, some methods already, some operations already in it. And so I can uh, click on that. And then that, when I save that, the, the message that we're um, doing is accepting the selection. So we've, the motorist has entered in uh, some uh, selections of their, um, uh, their registration number of their vehicle, um, the duration that they want, and then um, the payment. And now uh, they're accepting that uh, selection. Let's uh, let's drop another component on, which is the meter controller, and let's uh, put that on. And you can see underneath here that there are the methods displayed in the project browser. We've got um, we've got a interface there, and we've also got that uh, method. So let's drop the meter controller on. Very simple to do that. Uh, putting it on, let's not worry about any uh, connectors or anything. Again, it's um, join that up. Very simple, and let's um, again choose this one. Add a message to that. Um, and faults to that one, let's select the message that we want, calculate the payment. All right. Um, so um, that's an interesting uh, one to put in there. We'll save that. And again, we uh, the other thing we might want to do is use the time manager. The time manager is um, the thing that's doing all the calculations about uh, duration uh, and things. So let's put that in. Again, simple thing. We can use the, uh, the grid lines here to um, Smart grid lines there to make that easier. Drop that in again. Right mouse click on there. Uh, add a method. Um, select the um, select the core and get duration. So um, we you can see we're following these things through. We're going from one to one point one to one point two. And um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, drop on um, the um, the payment system. Um, to allow the meter controller to have that conversation uh, with the payment system. We'll drop this, drop this one on as a link and let's go okay to that. Now, this uh, this component um, we created in, in an earlier um, an earlier video. So we're reusing all these things. And if you look at this um, in, in the interaction points, we've got a number of different action interaction points. One of them is the cloud payments, which is where this thing goes off to um, to interact with a cloud based payment system, but we're not going to we're not interested in modeling that today. We're looking at this interaction so I can click on payments, which is um, a port that uh, is on this uh, on this element and I can just make this a little bit bigger. Always uh, easy to change this. I'm using the control key and my down arrows on my keyboard and uh, that makes it easier to do that. I'll whack, put this uh, payment one there Now the payment itself has got um, the payment port has got an interface as well. Looking down at the interaction points, uh, we've got payment there. I'll click on that. That brings up um, the payment interface. And again, I'll do um, a link to that with the, this association and uh, right mouse click on this. And we'll say add message to meter there. Now, so I'll just Stephen, um, just just for those who haven't watched the diagram before that features window has been populated by your previous modeling efforts that's right yes indeed so if, if i was to sort of try and draw one of these diagrams without having uh the the component model there first that that that, that will be empty and i could create them from there if i wanted to that's exactly right tom you can uh you can you can drop a component on that that um you have never created before and use that or you could drop a component on that you have created before but doesn't have uh any um uh any operations in it and so that would be a, a useful thing to do um so at any point i can um i can select this and and go to um select the the message there and go um to the operations and so that will bring up um uh you know the operation there and that's the validate card one and i could you know, describe that so the model is integrated, right? We're, we're integrating lots of things. We're reusing the component model. We're, you know, reusing parts of the use case model. Uh, and the tool, Enterprise Architect, allows you to navigate to those things. So we've just navigated to the operation. And we could put in, you know, if we were a developer, we could put in all sorts of other things about the parameters that are um, that are there. The card number, for example, is going in. Um, that's an integer. We could, you know, define the type for that. We could um, put in code, behavior, um, you know, pre and post conditions as well. So lots of flexibility um, there to, to do that. Um, this case here, we've uh, we've got this, um, we've put that that in, and not just one message there. We can now click on this and say, look, we want to add another message. So it's not just one message. We can uh, click on that 
it's hiding under there a bit. We'll click on that um, this call here, and this time not validating the card, but we're processing the payment. And so I'll save that. And again, just a little bit of um, lining these things up. And well, you've got while you're lining them up, Stephen, I've also noticed that there's some form of auto numbering going on with each of these messages as you're creating them. What's that? Yeah. About? Um, so that's yeah, that's well observed, Tom. There is, and you can see it's like a um, it's it's like like a um, uh, a system, a hierarchical system, and it's saying that these are part of a group. So if I was to click on any of these um, in, in any of these messages here, um, actually onto the, uh, the line there itself, and um, I can um, look at actually it might be this one here. I'm going to look at look at the um, sequence communication messages. So. Uh, oh. This this is bringing up the the list of um, messages, um, the name of it, what they're, what they're going from, and what they're going to. And you can see that what we've done is we've created this uh, this group here that's grouping uh, all of these messages one and one point one, one point two, one point three. And of course, I can use these little icons to um, to change the uh, position of those. So lots um, lots to explore there. Tom, it might be uh, something we do in a uh, in another video. We want to just cover these. Uh, main things. So the other thing is, I'm going to reuse something that we had for our interaction diagrams before, which is the legend. And I I love this feature in in the uh, tool, Tom. It, it it sort of brings everything to life, right? I can just say, look, I've dragged this legend on. Uh, we used it for the sequence diagram as well. And then the sort of magic happens that we can understand, um, you know, what's going uh, what's going on there. So um, very uh, very powerful. Um, and um, that's that's the, the 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 main parts of the communication diagram. Again, uh, a useful thing, very similar uh, in some ways to the sequence diagram. They're kind of close close cousins, if you like. Um, and I could drag that sequence diagram on, put put that on as a um, let's put it on as a navigation cell, and um, we can you know look at uh, a sequence diagram uh, there. We'll just choose. Uh, one of these icons. We've got a whole rich um, set of icons here that describe, you know, that can be used uh, by you to put in any uh, of those things yourself. So we've got a sequence diagram on there. Let's choose that to make sure that people understand that that's what we're up to. There it is. There, I can um, use a little icon at the, at the bottom to get a preview of that diagram. Uh, there it is. There, um, and you can see we've reused that, uh, reused that legend. Or I can click through to the diagram. The sequence diagram, Tom, is. Um, it seems to have the the audience um, seems to be more um, developers um, that use it or people that are interested in um, um, you know some of the more technical details. Whereas the communication diagram conveys a similar thing, but is a little bit more uh, friendly to uh, a business audience or a you know business analyst type of audience. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that, Stephen. Uh, really good stuff again. Love seeing how we can reuse our elements inside Enterprise Architect to continually build up different views uh, of the system. Uh, really great to see. Um, for all the audience, thanks very much for your time again today. Um, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe on the videos. Uh, Stephen and I will get to answering any questions that we have on those there. Uh, again, thank you very much, Stephen. We'll uh, see you in the next video. Look forward to it, Tom.